Today I'm going to teach you how to do two different styles of shampooing, the back wash and the side wash. Plus, you will learn scalp manipulation, scalp massage, and how to perform a hot towel treatment. Before you start any shampoo service, it's really important to do a proper hair and scalp analysis. This is going to show you the type of products that you're going to choose for the service. The other thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the client removes any jewelry that they're wearing. So if they have dangly earrings on, they can get caught in your hands as you're doing manipulations. If they have a necklace on, this can also dig into their neck when they lay back in the shampoo bowl, which is also very uncomfortable. And you're going to want to make sure that they're not wearing a really big hoodie. Anything that has a big hood on it is going to interfere and they're probably going to end up getting wet. This is my daughter, Eva. And and she's going to be my model today. Her hair is quite fine and it does have some color on it. So we're going to use some products that are designed for color treated, but fine hair. So something that's not going to weigh it down. Her scalp is very healthy. There's no redness or any abrasions, nothing like that that we have to be concerned with. If there's ever open sores on your client, do not perform this service. Now this puts you and the client both at risk. For a shampoo draping, you're going to use two towels. So one under the cape and one over the cape. I like to take my towel like this and then I flip it to the corner so I have it nice and long like that. I wrap it around the client's neck, untuck their hair, and just secure it underneath their chin like that. The cape should be a shampoo cape or an all-purpose cape. I like my all-purpose capes. I find that they're just good for everything. I'm gonna put that Make sure it goes over the towel. The cape should never touch any part of your client's skin. Fasten that in the back. I'm gonna take one more towel and I'm going to apply that one over top of the cape. So this is gonna to help to keep even nice and dry while I'm doing the shampoo. Before we lean Eva back into the sink, we're gonna make sure that the cape is positioned behind the chair. This is important because if I leave the cape here, and her back, I get water on the back of the cape, it's actually gonna drip down and she's going to become very wet. So we wanna make sure that that's behind the chair before we get going. Once that's in position, we're going to guide the client back to the sink. So we don't want the client to bang their head off the sink. We don't wanna jam the sink into their neck. We wanna simply guide them back. So I'll say, Eva, we're just gonna lean you back very gently. So I'm gonna take her hair into my hand. That way the hair is gonna go into the sink. And then as you lean back, Eva, I'm gonna move the sink so that it's in a nice position and make sure that my client is comfortable. Do you feel comfortable? Yes, I do. Okay, you wanna make sure that your client is indeed comfortable. Sometimes they'll lean back into the sink and they're back like this and they're extremely uncomfortable. All they need is a little bit of an adjustment, maybe adjust the sink itself or maybe they just need to slide down in the sink a little bit more. Once they're cozy, we get the service started. Before I turn the water on, I need to make sure that I take the hose into my hand and point it down into the sink. This is very, very, very important, okay? So it's gonna be positioned down into the sink. There's several different ways you can hold onto the hose. I like to cup it like this, and I like to keep my pinky underneath. You should always have one finger under the stream of water so that you can maintain the proper temperature throughout the entire service. Water pressure and temperature can be very finicky. So it can start off really good and then it can end up getting really hot or it can end up getting really cold. By keeping a finger under there, you can maintain consistent pressure and temperature. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn on this water. And while the water is warming up, I'd like to make mention that I'm wearing a waterproof watch. If you are a watch wearer and you're doing shampooing, make sure you have something on that's waterproof or you will ruin your watch. So I like the temperature under my finger, but the next place I'm gonna check it is actually on my wrist. So I'm just gonna put it on my wrist. On my wrist, it feels a little bit hot. That feels a little bit better. Okay. So we're gonna wet down the hair. I've got lots of pressure. And I'm gonna ask my client, is the temperature okay? It's perfect. It's perfect, okay. When you're wetting down the hair, you wanna make sure you've got lots of pressure. If the pressure isn't up high enough, the hair just isn't gonna get wet enough. You wanna kinda of move the hair around, lift it up, scoop it up, and really force that water into the hair. And then to get the nape area, I'm just gonna pick her and I'm gonna scoop her up just a little bit like that. 
Okay, I'm gonna turn off the water and put my hose back in. Make sure that you give the hair a little bit of a squeeze. Remember that hair is porous, so it absorbs liquid. If the hair is too wet, when you put product on, it's literally just gonna go right down the drain. So you wanna make sure that you get out a little bit of that excess water so that the shampoo can get in there and do what it needs to do. I'm gonna start Eva with a detox shampoo. Hair should always be shampooed twice. The first shampoo is to remove all of the product, any environmental dust, dirt, things like that. The second shampoo actually cleans the hair. I often like to start shampoo services with a detox. The detox shampoo that I use is by Kevin Murphy and I really like it because it does take off a lot of that product buildup, anything like that that's going to hinder me from doing a really good job in the services that I'm gonna provide for my client. So we're gonna rub it in our hands first. And then we're going to kind of just put it everywhere. Now, the key to a good shampoo is to make sure that you're not just on the surface, but that you actually get into the hair. Your fingers should be touching the scalp and not just the surface of the hair. Once we get that shampoo in there, we're getting a nice lather already. I'm gonna start my manipulations at the hairline. Two ways that you can do this. One way is to come in with your fingertips and you're gonna do little circles all the way down and then all the way back up again. The other thing that you can do is you can take your thumbs and you can use your thumbs. You can also do both if you'd like. We're gonna go back and forth, back and forth. Once you do the hairline, then I like to work in one inch increments, put my hands into the hair. So I'm not, they're not resting on the hair, I'm putting them into the hair. By getting them into the hair, I'm gonna move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I reach the ear and you can see that I have my pointer finger in front of the ear and all my other fingers are right behind so I'm right in there and then I'm going to come back up again and I'm going to do that one more time once I finish that movement I'm going to go back about one inch and I'm going to do the same thing again so this time I'm going to be completely behind the ear heading into the nape area and then I'm gonna do it one more time, and this time it's gonna take me right into the back of the head, so my fingers will actually be interlocking in the back of the head. The next manipulation I like to do is interlocking my fingers on the top. So I'll come in like this, and I interlock, making sure, again, my fingers are not on top of the hair, they're in the hair, and I'm gonna come all the way to the back, and I'm gonna come all the way forward. Notice my body position. I don't wanna be hunched over like this while I'm doing a shampoo. I wanna to try to keep my back upright. And this is a little bit low, so my stance is rather broad, and I'm going to bend my knees. By bending my knees, it allows me to get down into here without doing any damage to my back. So now we're gonna go into the nape. So I'm going to lift Eva's head, and Eva, you can rest your head in my hand. So all of the weight of Eva's head is in my hand right now. This gives you control over where the head is going. If you've ever done a shampoo where they think that they're helping you and they're lifting their head up out of the sink, this is not helpful, as you know. Ask the client to just rest their head into your hand and you can get, do all the work. Right now, her head is in my left hand and I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna come behind the ear and I'm going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I hit the center and then back to the ear. Then I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna support her head with my right and I'm gonna take my left hand and I'm gonna come back and forth, back and forth. All of those manipulations that I just did, you're going to do them two more times. So all the manipulations should be completed three times per shampoo. It's not always just the shampoo that's doing the cleaning, it's actually that friction that you're creating. You'll notice that this shampoo, we got some suds but we didn't get a whole lot and that's completely normal. Usually your first shampoo is not gonna produce a whole lot of suds where your second shampoo is. So we're gonna start to rinse. Again, I'm gonna be cupping the hair. I'm lifting it to make sure that the water is getting all the way in, right to the scalp. When you rinse the face, we wanna make sure that we protect the face. So I'm gonna use my hand to protect the face. You can put your hand this way, you can put your hand this way, whatever you're most comfortable with. And we're gonna come up, and this is shielding the face. So I'm able to get the water right up there at the hairline and not get her wet. I'm gonna move it down like that. Then we gotta make sure we don't get water in her ears, so we're gonna put our hand here 
and we're going to get that water coming down. Okay, and then the same thing on this side. I'm going to shield the ear, force that water down there. There we go. Now comes the tricky part, and that's the nape. There's a couple of ways you can do this. So the first way I'm going to show you is to kind of scoop. So I'm going to lift and scoop as I go. So I'll do that one more time. I'm going to lift and scoop. The other way that you can do it is you're going to ask your client to turn her head to the left and to the right. So Eva, could you turn your head to the right? By turning your head to the right now, I can see all of this hair and I can get that water all the way down in there. This is really great too for people that have low necklines or if you're doing a color service and trying to get the color off their neck. Okay, Eva, turn your head to the other side. Again, we're going to force that water down there. Okay, and you can relax again. So now I'm going to do the second shampoo. This time I'm going to use the Angel Wash by Kevin Murphy. It's specifically designed for fine hair. And I'm gonna do this one from the side. When you're working on the side, it's the same principle. We're gonna just get that shampoo everywhere. Okay, so now when we do the manipulations, we're going to start at the front hairline. This, again, you can do your fingers, but it is a lot easier just to use your thumbs when you're coming from the side. So we're gonna do some circles all the way down to the hairline and back up again. And you'll notice how much more sudsing we have happening here in her hair. Back. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until our fingers interlock at the back back up, wooden inch higher. Using the pads of your fingers, you never want to use your nails. Your nails will scratch your client and they're not going to enjoy that. And then we're going to interlock our fingers on the top. All the way to the back and then all the way back up again. Okay, so now we want to get into the nape area. So for the nape, I'm going to lift Eva's head and Eva, you can relax your head into my hand. I do a couple of swipes here just to distribute the shampoo and then I'm going to support her head and I'm going to come in on one side and I'm going to take it all the way over to the other and back again. And then you're going to just repeat those manipulations two more times. Now we're ready to rinse. Make sure again that your hose is pointing down before you turn on your water. Get all the soap off your hands. Check it on my wrist, it feels pretty good. Okay, we're gonna ask Eva. Eva, how's the temperature? Feels good. Feels good? <laughs> all right, so I'm just moving that water back and forth. And now again, I'm gonna just shield the face as I go and I rinse off that hairline. I'm gonna protect the ear. Ears are bendy, so we're able to bend them forward a little bit. And then the same thing on the other side. There we go. All right, now we're gonna be doing some more cupping. So I'm lifting the hair, really pushing the water through to the scalp. And so now to rinse the nape area, what you can do is we can lift her head and we can do a scoop. So we're just gonna take that hose and we're gonna go right in there and do a little scoop. And I usually just do a little, we we'll call it the pucker. <laughs> Cause you can kind of hear it going. <laughs> all right. And we're gonna do that one more time to make sure that we have all the shampoo off of her nape. The nape area often gets neglected in a shampoo service. And this is actually probably one of the more important spots to get. When you think about when you're sweating, where does a lot of that sweat accumulate? It's going to accumulate right at the back of your neck. The other thing is when you're doing a hair color service, you wanna make sure that you get all of the hair color off. If you leave excess color on the hair after a color service, they can have a lot of irritation after the fact, and that's not good. Those two different types of shampoos are completed. Now we're going to do a conditioner. So whenever you focus putting conditioner on, you should always focus on the mid shaft and the ends and then work your way up to the root area. 
If you put all the conditioner right at the roots, what's going to happen is it's going to be too heavy. It's going to weigh it down. We have natural oils on our scalp called sebum. If you add more oil to that, it's just going to be too oily and it's really going to be weighty, especially on our fine hair clients. So this one, we're going to apply it mid shaft to ends and then I'm going to show you some manipulations we can do. The manipulations are very similar to the shampoo, but you're going to use longer, more exaggerated movements with a lot of firm pressure. So right now I'm raking it through her hair just to make sure that it's well distributed. And by raking it through and getting it distributed, I'm starting to slow my movements down and it's kind of just preparing Eva that, okay, it's about to get good. This is the best part of any service right here, is your conditioner. I'm gonna take her head nice and firmly in my hands and I'm going to start to do circular movements. I've got nice firm pressure on her head. Bringing this down. You never wanna to apply too much pressure at the temple. That is actually really painful, so you don't wanna do that. Then when you finish, you're gonna just release out of the ends of the hair and then we're going to come in and we're going to do that one more time. So now I'm going to take my hands and I'm just going to the pads of the fingers, nice slow even pressure following down the shape of the head. Until my fingers fall out. There's lots of different manipulations that you can do. I'm just going to show you a few here today. Another one that's nice to do that many people like is that interlocking that we did during the shampoo. But we're going to take it and we're going to do it nice and slow. Exaggerated. And I'm going to just use my thumbs there at the back, right at her occipital. I'm kind of doing circular back and forth. Even when I'm at a backwash station, when I do conditioner manipulations, I like to move to the side. I find I have a little bit more control. That's just my own personal thing. I'm going to place my fingers right here, right at the top of her jaw. We hold a lot of tension in our jaw, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slowly slide our fingers up. and off the head. I'm gonna go just behind the ear. Same thing. And one more right at the back. The last thing I like to do is the nape. So I'm just going to lift up Eva's nape just like that. She's nice and slippery from all the conditioner and her head is just rested in my hand and I'm just gonna come in and I'm actually doing a little bit of a massage just in at the neck. So right here at the base, just underneath that occipital. You can repeat those manipulations as many times as you like. Because I'm doing a mask, I'm going to do a hot towel treatment on Eva. So using a hot towel over a treatment is going to help to open up the cuticle and really push that treatment right into where it needs it. A hot towel treatment is also super relaxing and feels really good on the client. Okay, so here's a nice hot towel. And we're gonna just place it over Eva's head just like this, nice and tight. How's that feel, Eve? Wonderful. And then I'm just going to apply some pressure. Some people like to actually do some manipulations over the towel. The towel will cool off quickly, so I don't like to leave it on for too, too long. And then we're just going to slide the towel right off through her hair. Remember, always slow, exaggerated, firm pressure movements when you're doing a scalp massage. This is how I like to wrap up the hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lift up Eva's head a little bit and I'm gonna tuck the towel underneath her neck. Just like that, okay, lean right back. Once you get the towel right underneath the client, you're going to take one side this way, one side this way. Then you're gonna take this, this side here, the one you started on, and you're gonna kind of swoop it around like this and you're gonna give it a little tuck. Take this side here and it's gonna come around this way 
and we're going to tuck it on the side there. Let's get that tucked in. There we go. Okay, and you can lift up. Now what I'll do is I'm going to take this towel off. This is all wet, so I'm going to get rid of this one. I'll escort my client to the station that she's going to be getting her service, and then I'll clean out my sink so it's ready for the next stylist to use. If you'd like to see how I did Eva's haircut, check out this video on the blend cut. Have a great hair day.